findit.gm's business directory. When I'm looking for a good employee, I click on Job Center, post available jobs, browse CVs online, or just wait for job seekers to contact me. I do a lot of traveling. When I need someone to get me to my destination, I just search for travel agents and let them handle the rest. Where to next? I am the president of New Century Limited, the creators of findit.gm. My business card says Ahmed Tijan Jalo, but you can call me the entrepreneur. And findit.gm makes it all possible. Findit.gm. Discover new possibilities. from Banjo and welcome to the news in our major stories this half hour. The National Environment Agency secures a multi-million dollar funding package meant to combat land degradation and a host of other environmental concerns in the Gambia. Local government officials in the KMC familiarized themselves with a project that seeks to strengthen transitional partnerships and networks for improved participatory governance. The United States pledges over $100 million of aid to Kenya as famine in the East African country threatens the survival of some 12 million people. And the British government attempts to wave a novice solution to contagious rioting in various areas around England, where violent protesters have been looting stores and setting buildings ablaze. This story is much more coming ahead in the news. I am Isaac Jadabo. You're watching the news on JRTS and we thank you for joining us. The National Environment Agency has been bracing up for the implementation of projects worth over 8 million US dollars. The funds provided by the Global Environment Facility are meant to bolster efforts aimed at protecting the environment. Well, after consultations with stakeholders in rural Gambia, NEA officials Monday converged on the Birkama Area Council for the final consultative meeting ahead of the validation of a blueprint that will determine projects to benefit from the package. Mamadou Lamin Sise has more on that as well as the presentation of coconut seedlings by the Worldwide Fund for Nature to the Youth in Action Group. Environmental sustainability is number eight on the list of primary concerns to the world, the MDGs. The phenomenon is a global concern which spares no country. Statistics show that third world countries emit less greenhouse gases but are most vulnerable to the effects of climate change. While developed countries are yet to agree on a legally binding treaty, developing countries are not relenting in their efforts to secure funds to reinvigorate adaptation strategies. The National Environment Agency has used its tenure on the Global Environment Facilities Board to secure an unprecedented funding package. The Gambia has been allocated $8.7 million on Jeff Star funding. Star is a system of transparent allocation of resources. What Jeff does in that is that he looks at country and each country they allocate a specific amount for a specific amount of time. Um, in Jeff, around five star funding is 2011 to 2016. The sum is coming into the coffers of the NEA for the first time. And in view of the complicated nature of climate change, the agency is adopting a participatory approach, allowing those in the grassroots to contribute to the development of a national portfolio formulation document which will define how and on what projects the 8.7 million US dollars will be spent. Here in Brikama, a similar meeting is underway. Although this meeting is yet to end, NEA's research and development manager has a clue. The most pressing environmental concerns threatening livelihoods will be addressed first. We have 4.57 million on land degradation. There is no doubt in the Gambia that our land is a problem. Our yield the yield we have from the land has dropped and that's affecting our livelihoods and there is increased land use so we have funding for that and we are going to engage in projects in that area we have two million for biodiversity yes there is no doubt that we are losing a lot of our biodiversity 
A lot of animals that we used to have, we don't have it. Even three species that we used to have, we don't have it. The governor of West Coast Region, Lamin Sane, told GRTS that attitudinal change on the side of the citizenry will be crucial in efforts to adapt to the inevitable change in climate. have to put the hands on deck. I always see here people who say, this is the business of, uh, uh, how do you call it, forestry department. It's the business of the environment or it's the business of the area council. This is everybody's business. Strict law enforcement is one of the weapons environmentalists have been using in recent times. With the acquisition of the multi-million dollar funding package, I asked the Paramount Chief the role that the National Council of Sefolu will play in dealing with perpetrators. Anybody found to do that? I think a uh, few weeks ago you have heard what uh, my colleague of uh, Opa Nyomi District Sefo have uh, uh, done in, in respect of uh, such uh, unscrupulous uh, people. A related development, the Minister of Forestry and the Environment, Jero Silla, presided over the presentation of coconut seedlings donated by the Worldwide Fund for Nature to the Youth in Action Group, a voluntary organization working to protect our beaches from coastal erosion. The donation, which according to WWF Director General is part of the annual tree planting exercise, is earmarked for a pilot project in the Kanifi municipality. Those implementing the project are urging young people to be friendly to the trees to ensure their sustainable growth. So we want the community this time to participate and know that these coconuts are for the community. We want the participation of the community. We want everybody at Selekunda KMC area to see this coconut as theirs. For the Environment Minister, it is the moment to act collectively against the threat posed by climate change, noting that while his office will always be ready to forge partnerships and mobilize conservation efforts, Gambians, he stressed, must know that the task is all inclusive. Every individual has a stake in this climate change era. Either we work together to ensure that our, the future of our children are secured, or we all go down because of climate change. And climate change is a reality. Keeping the environment safe and sound is an integral part of efforts aimed at ensuring human existence, which depends by and large on the way we manage and exploit our flora and fauna. And as the world continues to get warmer, countries, especially those that are most prone to climate change, must be adequately prepared to adapt to the situation or mitigate its impact. For the consequences of an ever-changing climate will be devastating. Modula Min Sisa, GRTS News. The hike in the demand for certain food items during the month of Ramadan at times drives traders to raise prices. Despite numerous calls to the contrary, shoppers are still complaining about skyrocketing prices. As a Tubadian Saar was at Banjul's Albat Market and she reports, the price hike has triggered an outcry. Ramadan is Islam's holiest month, observed by Muslims the world over. The period is marked by a month of fasting and prayers. The month of Ramadan of recent has been characterized by high rise in prices of basic food commodities, causing some outcry in some quarters. At the Banjul market, women can be seen carrying their shopping baskets, roaming the various corners of the market, not because they don't know what to buy, but according to some, due to the fact that they are finding it hard to find the desired cost for some of the items in the market. Madam Jan, a family woman, lamented the high cost of basic food commodities during the month of Ramadan, which is, is of great cause of concern to many people. She said that prices of food commodities before the Ramadan was largely affordable compared to the month of Ramadan. For all the difficulties, we have little choice but to find a way out of it and buy what we can afford, she said. Like Jang Fatumoto Ture, saying a lot more need to be done to help poor people, particularly during the month of Ramadan. For a month as holy as a month of fasting, people, especially Muslims, should learn to be helpful and full of mercy, she concluded. Shoppers mostly blame the high rocketing prices of food commodities on the greed of vendors. But this is not the case for Omar Jha, a vendor at the Banjul market. Jha told GRTS that the high prices of basic commodities does not emanate from the vendors, but with the merchants who import into the country. He, however, said that they are left with no choice but to increase their prices when wholesalers do so, as they also want to maximize the little profit they yearn to make. Ajisar, a face vendor, also shared the same views with Omar, for she too said she is forced to increase the prices of her fish. Due to the high prices, she normally buys her fish stock, 